Good evening and welcome to Silicon Valley Metaphysics, the show that explores alternative therapies and practices in the Silicon Valley. Tonight, as our guest, we have David Wilson. He's a medical hypnotherapist. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thanks. Great to have you. Okay. We've been through this before. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Dave was one of my teachers at the Palo Alto School of Hypnotherapy, where, which is I, my alma mater and his as well. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what you do, Dave. Well, now I have a medical hypnotherapy practice, so I see clients. I also have a series of guided meditations I've created on CD, so mm. I have those available on my website. And so I do speaking engagements at lots of senior centers and uh, uh, have, have uh, done a number of talks at uh, Stanford School of Medicine for the study groups there. Okay. And uh, so it's very interesting work. It's different all the time. And, uh, and as you know, with hypnotherapy, you can decide how busy or, or relaxed you feel like being at the time. So it's very right. nice. Yeah, I like it. Wonderful. So what do you do at the Stanford School of Medicine? Well, I've just, uh, they've had me come in and give talks to various study groups. And study group, you mean by? Uh, well, they, 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 they don't reveal a lot of that to me. Uh -huh. uh, but they have different groups. A lot of them are, are various groups of seniors some with uh, certain uh, diseases or afflictions they're trying to deal with. Oh, so it's like a uh, clinical study. It, yeah. Okay, I, I clinical study. Mm -hmm. So, oh, that's cool. It is. And so the senior groups are, that's a whole different thing. That's in a different Well, they're place. often very interested in uh, uh, deep relaxation, stress reduction, right up my alley. So I will usually give them a number of ideas uh, on how they can do that, and then we'll follow it up with uh, a guided uh, meditation for the whole group and get them in a real relaxed state. And so that's always real popular with everyone. You know? <laughs> yeah. Feels that's good to great. be relaxed, you know? Yeah, it does. It does. It, it, it's kind of funny because I remember the people in my class, it was almost like, you know, they were doing drugs or something. They, <laughs> they'd put each other under hypnosis yeah, and they'd right. get together in groups. It was pretty, it's pretty well, funny. And it, and it feels so good. That, it really that does. you want to do those meditations. You want to get in that deeply relaxed state. And of course, then all your body functions perfectly when you're in that state. So, so it's not only good for your mind, but good for your, your body and spirit as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So talk a little bit about your CDs. How'd you come up with that? Um, you know, it started, my, my wife uh, uh, went through breast cancer surgery. And, uh, and so I worked with her to prepare her for that. Was, needless to say, she was terrified. And so I got her in a very calm and relaxed state and uh, in, in preparation for the surgery and aligned her body, mind, and spirit to work with the doctors and then also to rapidly heal afterward. Uh, so we did all that process. It worked very well for her. In fact, uh, the doctors noticed that she barely bled during the surgery. Uh, the surgery was over almost two hours early. She was back to work a week early, and she was out of the hospital three days early. So everything moved faster thanks to uh, the, the hypnosis and the suggestions to do so. Uh, but when she got uh, healed and, and went for her final checkup, and they said, okay, you're completely clean and cancer-free, right. the first words out of her mouth were, oh, I hope I don't get it in my right breast. And, of course, from the standpoint of a hypnotherapist and how you think affects your body, uh, you know, I was like, oh, don't say that. <laughs> so uh, that led me to create my first program, which is called Attain Perfect Health. Mm -hmm. And it moves your thinking away from a recurrence of an illness or disease and moves it to a very positive, healthful place. Okay. And uh, so that you're focused on having a better diet. And, you know, we re rebuild our body every six months or so cell by cell. So it has suggestions that you will rebuild your body in perfect health. Hmm. And uh, so it's one of the CDs I talk a lot about when I go to the different study groups. It's always of interest to people and, and, uh, and the people that always get the most copies from me are the doctors that are in attendance. Yeah. Because uh, they can see the value of it sure. so readily. Sure. Yeah. And so that led me then to get into the production of the CDs. And so once I had done that first one, then I did one for deep sleep and I did one for reducing the pain and swelling of arthritis, one for weight loss. And... Uh, They've all been successful, and people are very happy with them. Excellent. Uh, I, have to, I have to tell you a little story. The, the sleep one, I went into a digital studio and recorded it, so it's uh -huh. a very high-quality recording. Uh, then they give you a copy, so you can listen to it a few times, see what you think. Mm -hmm. So once you 
decide it's what you're looking for, then I would call the studio and tell them to go ahead and master it, uh, which is preparation for mass production. Right. So I called the engineer. I said, okay, I'm happy with it. And uh, I went to sleep with it last night. And boy, I had a great restful sleep. So let's go ahead with it. I think it's, it's what I was looking for. So he said, well, this ought to take me, oh, an hour, hour and a half to master. And then I'll call you back and we can uh, get it to uh, the recording company. Well, uh, almost five hours went by. And then he called me and he said, you know, if anybody's thinking this thing might not work, he said, I have to tell you, during the mastering process, it put me to sleep three times. Oh and, uh, and he said, so if anybody's wondering, it really works. Yeah, so. so you did take that testimonial for your website, right? Uh, yeah, I'm mean, preparing the whole fact. I want to get a video of him telling the story. Yeah. So uh, speaking of websites, since mm -hmm. we're on the, on the topic, mm -hmm. you sent out a rather encouraging excited message the other That's day right. <laughs> and it looks great thank you and what is that it's david wilson hypnosis dot com awesome. all run together like one word so david wilson hypnosis and uh, dot com and uh, and then you can see all the cds i have available and and uh, in fact a lot of people i've just made it available on a new website a lot of people can uh, will go there and just download the program right into their iPod or MP3 player and they don't even have to have a CD. So they can get it immediately right off the website. So that's been a new development I'm very excited about. And it doesn't cost them anything? Sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of the programs are $10. The weight loss program is, uh, if you were to buy it in a store, it's $30, but uh -huh. on the website it's 20 oh, if you cool. do the download. Yeah, or, or if you order off the website. Yeah. And it actually has five uh, uh, meditations on it. So it's, it's a very full CD. There's a lot there. Yeah. Cool, cool. So tell me how you got uh, started teaching at the school. How, how, actually, let's really rewind. <laughs> and how did you get interested in the school? Oh, uh, well, that, yeah, that was kind of an interesting process. When I was a uh, professional comic magician, I was touring with a stage hypnotist named Orman McGill. And Orman was very famous in the 1950s and 60s. He was on all the big shows like Hollywood Palace and the Mike Douglas Show and Merv Griffin and all of those. And, uh, me. and in fact, when I first met him, uh, Orman McGill, I was about uh, 16. And, uh, and I was very taken by him. Well, then when I had an agent call me in my early 20s and say, would you like to tour as an opening act for his hypnosis show? Oh, I was thrilled. Um, Orman's real interest, though, was not stage hypnosis. It was therapeutic hypnosis. Mm. So when we would be having dinner between shows or traveling, he was constantly talking about the therapeutic end of hypnosis and all the wonderful things you could do to help people with hypnosis. So he was a great influence in that direction. Uh, when he got into his 80s, he trained me to be a stage hypnotist which I did for about 10 years, primarily in just colleges and high schools. So I did it as kind of uh, an entertaining yet educational show, uh, combining a lot of what Orman had taught me about therapeutic hypnosis. Uh, when I would do a show, there would always be people waiting for me afterward that would say, can you help me quit smoking or lose some weight or get over my, my anxiety? And uh, uh, I found that when I did work with some of them, I enjoyed helping them so much that uh, I decided to look into finding a school that I could really learn the therapeutic end from. At that point, Orman was still alive in his late 80s, and he said, you know, Dave, there's a school right in Palo Alto called the Palo Alto School of Hypnosis, and it's run by Josie Hadley, and he was good friends with Josie. So he introduced me to her. And uh, so I was very fortunate in that uh, at least the first half of all my training was with Josie. And then uh, with Dorothy Tayo. Mm -hmm. And Dorothy had been sort of a support person for Josie and would teach a few classes at every level. And Josie taught the majority. Well, when Josie became uh, ill with, uh, with cancer and eventually passed away, uh, Dorothy purchased the school and took it over. And uh, with my background in entertainment, standing on stage, uh, she asked me if I would be interested in, in uh, trying out teaching a class. Mm -hmm. And I found that I really enjoyed that. Um, if ever you teach something, you have to learn it better than you just learn it if you take a class. Right. So uh, I really enjoyed that aspect because I, I really dug into the material uh, much more so than I had as a student. And uh, 
uh, and I enjoyed teaching so much, uh, and it was a hit with the students that Dorothy asked me if I would continue to teach and do more classes. So now I teach one or two classes at every level of certification, mm -hmm. and uh, really enjoy it. Yeah, well, you're good at it. Thank you. You keep Thank everyone's you. attention. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and what I found about the school is it's, it's fun. It and is. it is very, it is. you know, it's a great atmosphere. Like I was telling you before the show, how, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of bummed out that I couldn't make it to today's class. But, <laughs> you know, it's just a real... It's a great environment, and yes. they, it's very open, and they give you, you know, anything, anything they can do so that you will succeed. That's they right. are willing to do it. That's right. And it's funny because my mother went to Palo Alto School of Hypnosis, and she actually shared an office with Josie. No kidding. And I didn't know this <laughs> wow. until after I had enrolled. And I said, hey, guess what I'm doing? <laughs> well, and then I found out surprise, about this. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I know. It's kind of uh, funny, the synchronicity of the mm -hmm. way things happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, that's interesting. Well, I, I agree with you. The atmosphere of the school, uh, as corny as it may sound, it's a very warm, loving, and caring atmosphere. And so many of the students that come and take classes, once they've graduated, don't want to leave. And they're all right. trying to figure out ways to stick around and right. take another class, you know. Right. And uh, I have to admit that's probably why I'm still there teaching, because <laughs> I didn't want to leave. Sure. And, you know, coming from show business where it's, it's really uh, uh, cutthroat and everybody's competing with everybody to get ahead of the next guy, uh, it's so nice to be in this atmosphere where everybody only wants to help everyone be successful in whatever they're doing. And if anybody is working with a client and they're having a, a difficult time, uh, everybody puts their heads together and, and comes up with maybe another approach or two. So it's, it's really a, a terrific place, lots of support there, and uh, uh, I agree with you completely. I, I don't yeah. want to leave either. <laughs> I know, and and Dorothy's so wonderful. There's so mm -hmm. many times she's let me use her office to, you know, yeah. take clients into, and so it's really, it's very nice. Very good. Very mm -hmm. nice of her. Mm -hmm. So, I wanted to ask you, what got you into the entertainment industry in the first? Um, it, you know, when I was. Uh, Eight years old, in third grade, I saw a magician at my school, and that really affected me. And then, oddly enough, just I think it was two nights later, they were showing the movie Houdini with Tony Curtis and Janet Leigh. And <laughs> you're really and, 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 and oh, I, I was hook, line, and sinker. And I announced to my family I was going to be a professional magician. And uh, <laughs> and you know, if they had just said, "That's nice, Dave," I probably wouldn't have stuck. I would have done like most kids, learned a trick or two, and moved on. Hi. But my mother was very concerned at this announcement. I'm thinking, <laughs> I was eight, Mom. You know, but she she said, No, you're not going to be a professional magician. Well, that's you know, all. That's you not the say. thing you tell me that I can't <laughs> do what I want to do. So it made me so determined to prove her wrong that you know I did it for 35 years. So. <laughs> wow, <Yeah>. wow. <laughs> that must have been. Uh, you know, I see so many people. Well, I is one of them. There's many times where, you know, we all go through about two or three careers in our lifetime, you know? And so it's wonderful now, the point I've gotten in my career, where I can start transitioning into my full-time metaphysical career and my hypnotherapy. It's great. And you're being a television hostess. <sighs> yeah. Here we are. Who would have thought? Making the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so what is, what's a routine day for you? Uh, you know, I, let's say a routine day. I probably get up and meditate. That's always the first thing I do. Then have some coffee, and uh, if I'm being really good, I do some yoga. And then I go into my office and, and see whatever clients I have arranged. Uh, I, I usually like to have them in the earlier part of the day. And then uh, often I teach in the evening or maybe in the afternoon or, or speak at a senior center, something like that. Or in the case of like when I'm working with uh, 
uh, cancer patients, I will usually go to their home to work with them. It's just oh. easier for them than trying to get it all together and come down to the office. So I'll go in and work with them, and and, uh, and I always ask that they have either a friend there or a spouse there uh, that, that can sort of see what happens and, right. and, and take it all in so that that person that needs help can completely relax and not be concerned about uh, you know what's going on in their home. And uh, I just find that works really well. So that that's kind of an average day for me. Yeah. All right. So why medical hypnosis? Well, you know, when when I started doing hypnotherapy, I really thought initially I would be happy with just doing things like helping people quit smoking and losing weight. Uh, then I started working with people for self-confidence and self-esteem, and I saw how they progressed and improved in their lives. And then uh, uh, when the course was offered to me to take medical hypnotherapy, I thought, well, it's, I'll take it. It sounds interesting. I doubt if I'll ever do it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, of course, I found out right away that uh, helping someone that really needs help is probably the most gratifying work of all. Right. And and also, right as I finished that course and got my certification, that's when uh, my wife uh, found out that she had uh, cancer in her left breast. So, Timing's everything. Yes, yes, and I suppose it was meant to be is f so that I could be there to help her. Amazing how our yeah. path goes. Amazing. Mm -hmm. It is. So, what are some of the misconceptions that you hear about hypnosis? There's a lot of fear out there. Well, first of all, there's a lot of people that tell me it's mind control. It is not, because in order for me to induce hypnosis upon you, I must have your complete cooperation. Right. If at any point you decide, I don't want this to happen, you come out of it just yeah. like that. Uh, so I'm not in control, you are. Uh, I say the same thing to everybody, pretty much, to get them into that deep state of relaxation. For the person that follows along, works with me, pays attention to what I'm saying, they go right into that deep place. Uh, for the person that's nervous about it and they keep thinking about other things, they don't get there. And right. so for some people, it takes some practice to learn how to get to that deep place. Uh, it's not like in the movies. I can't just say a few things and you fall over and do whatever I say. I'd be so much wealthier if that were true. <laughs> but no, that doesn't happen. And, and I also can't make you do things you would not normally do. Right. Like, for instance, I can't make you give me all the money in your wallet. That would only work if you really wanted to give me all the money in your wallet. And then I wouldn't need to say anything, you know. Uh, I can't, you, like in movies where they make people go kill people, you can't do any of that. That doesn't work. It wouldn't or happen. Or you're simple, bark like a dog or cluck like a chicken. Well, now see, the sad side of that is, because I did stage hypnosis for, for at least a dozen years, and the people that volunteer to come on stage to be hypnotized, they come on stage because they tend to be the class clowns, they tend to be the drama students, they tend to be people that want to be singers and comedians and they want to be in movies so this is their chance to do what they want to do so they come up and when then when they go under they're great subjects and they'll do lots of silly stuff because they want to get laughs and they want to be funny <laughs> now the person that comes up that's an introverted person even when they go into hypnosis they stay introverted so those right. are the people in a stage show you see just sitting in their chair like this and they right. never move because everything that we're asking them to do is beyond their personality so they just don't respond but I've had them later after the show say, wow, what a show that was, because they can hear everything. So sometimes they're even chuckling while they're sitting there, even though they're in a light state of hypnosis. But uh, they still don't participate. But the other ones are just channeling their inner chicken or dog. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They like getting the laughs. They, you know, they, it's fun for them. So. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Dave. For our next segment, we're going to bring in a woman that has actually gone through the hypnosis process and she can tell you what her experience was. Thank you. Welcome back. Our next guest is Danielle Colvin and Danielle's been through the hypnotherapy process and we're going to speak to her about what she went through, her experience, and hopefully our viewers out there will find out that this isn't something to be afraid of. Welcome, Danielle. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'm glad to be here. Good. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your experience. When, I understand it was kind of a tragic time in your well, life. Well, my husband became very ill, and I realized the seriousness of the situation 
and I realized all how responsible I was for everything, whereby we always shared the experience together this time, I was responsible for all. And it created a great deal of anxiety. And a person that I met had gone uh, to see a hypnotherapist in order to lose weight because a cardiologist had told her, if you don't lose weight, you will certainly die. And she had gone to this man his name was also Don Wilson, believe it or not, and I went to see him, and I found out that uh, for, for the description he gave is that hypnotherapy is really uh, rethinking uh, a, a condition whereby you, you imagine something that is very bad for you, but you can reimagine it to work for you, and that's how I was first introduced to it. And I was able to learn from him what they call self-hypnosis. Right. And that was very, very helpful, actually. And even in that process, I met, it was group self-hypnosis. I met other people who also needed to have uh, their mind reconditioned, per se. Uh, we'll give you one example. There was a person who was a pilot, and he traveled from America to Europe all the time. And because of that, he had ex extreme trouble sleeping because his schedule was constantly being changed. And he uh -huh. was there to learn to sleep on command in a way. That was one of them. <laughs> and That's there amazing. were others, of course. And I, they came, when we finished the session, there were many sessions. Uh, one another gentleman had trouble because he could not have his teeth worked on. Uh, the fact that he couldn't take um, shots in the mouth, and, and he had to be able to have his teeth worked on without any anesthetic, and he was able to do that. And both of these people successful, who were successful at what they wanted to achieve, one that was kind of fun was a lady who was extremely, extremely skinny, but she decided she wanted to learn belly dancing. And in order to do that, she had to control the muscles of her body, of course. And at the end session, she did a dance for us, able to m move the muscles of her body. <laughs> wow. And, uh, that's about it, <laughs> that's really. That's fun. And for me, it was helpful because I could cope with whatever I had to cope by just thinking of it in a different sort of way. So this was a positive life experience yes. for you. Yes, it was. And th let me... When you say self-hypnosis, um, Dave, would you agree with me that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis? Sure. We're yeah. all, you know, we all have this ability to do this. It's just going into a deep state of relaxation. Yes. And so, you know, that is helpful for a lot of people. Have you, I realize that you used it for a specific time in your life. Do you continue? Well, I've... You, you have to keep in, in the habit of it, right. really. Yeah. And I have, I have not kept, I've kept it for a long while, but right now I don't, I don't, I'm no longer in the habit of practicing it. And it's something that you train for and you learn to do it, and then it starts on command, then you can do it. I have not done it for a while because I feel Right now I'm, rela I'm relaxed because I'm retired. I do pretty much what I want. And <laughs> I don't have any anxieties really to speak of. But if I had serious anxiety, I probably would go back to it. Excellent, sure. excellent. So for the viewers out there, do you have any words of wisdom regarding hypnosis, regarding your experience? I would say they should try it. I have known... I was with the group of people I went through with self-hypnosis. They were certainly uh, successful in controlling whatever they were trying to control. And it's worth trying and seeing if it works for them. All right. Sure, and wouldn't you say it, it takes a little practice it to get the hang of it for some people, yeah. Exactly. But, but it's something everybody can do if they want to make yeah. that effort. Well, so. You know, when you first begin, of course, they teach you the principle, and the person like you assists you in achieving this state of relaxation. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something that 
can be interesting, the development of it, really. At one point, he always would play music, as I said to you before. He would play music, especially harp music. And when you're in this state of complete relaxation, I remember that somehow the harp was playing in my brain, like I had uh, uh, chords in my brain. It was playing the most beautiful music, it was totally relaxed, and it was wonderful. That's great. Yes. But it does take practice, really. You, you cannot just say, I'm going to do it just like that. You have right. to be trained at it. Right. And you really have to be, you want to be there. As Dave mentioned before, you yes. know, people that don't want to go under hypnosis just can't do it. Well, the lady who introduced me to it or suggested that I do that, herself was very quite obese and would have certainly died of a heart attack and it had helped her a lot. She had lost weight. She was in control of the medical symptom that was causing her to possibly die and she, she was highly, speaking highly of it so I thought well I'll try it and it was a positive for me too. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much for telling us your story, Danielle. Okay. I hope this, I'm sure this will help other people to maybe mm. investigate okay. something that they didn't think they would before. Okay. So thank you. Okay. And thank you, Dave. My pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for coming on. And could I maybe come back and hypnotize somebody sometime on Absolutely. the show? Absolutely. Okay. I think that would maybe be great. we can bring the cameras right into my office. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed our first installment of Silicon Valley Metaphysics, and we hope to see you next time.